Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quest for Creative, episode 21. In yesterday's episode, we did a... We, we created a Technicolor Sheep Farm. And we can take a look real quick at how well that's doing. If I can land. And it seems to be doing pretty good. We've got plenty of wool. A lot of wool that... Uh, I can use for other things. If I ever get uh, in the mood to pretty up the house, I can use that. Use it for a lot of carpet. Um, we have more liquid meat than I have any idea what to do with. I've got to do something with that here soon. All right, but let's do. Let's take a look at a few quick things that I did uh, while just off camera. Just things that uh, were taking the obvious and turning them into, you know, usable stuff. Uh, like this right here. I found a bunch of roosters and basically just put an item hopper under there and connected it to the infinity lockers and now I have eggs. Easy peasy. Uh, over here, whee, I have an igneous extruder on top of a redstone furnace and of course that makes smooth stone. So now we have boop, smooth stone. Uh, over here, this one's a little bit more complicated. Nope. Over there. I just set up a basic tree farm. It has, uh, let's see, Sakura saplings, Origin saplings, Rowan saplings, Oak saplings, Rubber saplings, Oak saplings? Why are the Oak sap, the jungle saplings showing up as Oak saplings? Eh, whatever. Um, Rowan, Pine, Rowan, Rowan. Yeah, those aren't Rowan saplings. Those are something else. Um, eh, whatever. But, yeah, you get the point. Basically, I have a bunch of different types of trees now. So, I have uh, alder saplings. That's one of them. Yeah, the alder wood. Ha hawthorn saplings in the hawthorn wood. Uh, jungle saplings. Persimmon. However you pronounce that. Uh, fruit? Vegetable? I don't even know what it's supposed to be. Um, I don't think those count because I only ever got one of them. Hmm. Uh, origin saplings. Origin wood is just oak wood, so we don't have to worry about that. Pine saplings. Pine wood. Uh, Sakura saplings. And Sakura wood. Okay. And then the last thing I did off camera was just raspberry bushes, blueberry bushes, and blackberry bushes, which gives us, obviously... Raspberry, blueberry, and blackberries. Yeah, so I've been expanding a little bit. Just the stuff that, uh, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable making an episode out of. But this is Quest for Creative, so we've got to get as many blocks as we can. Uh, so we're up pretty close to the end of page two here on our infinite items list. And that's actually pretty cool. Um... Yeah, but today we are going to do something. We are going to do something again. It's going to be a duplicate, uh, but it's going to be a different type of duplicate. Those Sakura trees grow big. All right. Anyways, uh, what we are going to do today, we are going to revisit the laser drill. But today we are going to do things slightly different. I'm actually going to start completely from scratch with a second laser drill, and we're going to build it like that one over there, except it's not going to output the ores. It's going to output the finished product, the uh, gold ingots, the, the, the emeralds, and that kind of thing. It's not going to output the ores. That's what these are for, pulverizers and redstone furnaces. I kind of made them in bulk. They're more than I need. At least I really hope it's more than I need. But it's going to be complex, and there's going to be a lot of them, and I need stone to build on top of. But it should be, I mean, relatively straightforward to build, I think. Yes, I know, I now have a locker full of smooth stone, but eh, whatever. All right, so let us get started. And the first thing we got to do is start with, obviously, a hole to bedrock. Which, I did not fancy this one up because, eh, screw that. And we need our laser drill and our pre-chargers. 
plunk down the laser drill. Plunk down the pre-chargers real quick. One thing I found out that was really interesting, um, the platform that's on that one over there, that's above this where it stores the generator, I found that it's actually a really good place to stand and have zombies just walk into these lasers here. It's kind of funny. This may be a bad place to put this. This might be a little too close to the tree farm, but eh, whatever. Whoops, didn't want that there. Pop that. I want you there so I can build you out. And let's see, this would be a five by five? Yeah, five by five platform above the uh, laser drill. Let's see if I can think straight. Um, in case it gets a little bit uh, uh, goofy or I slow down or I stop thinking very well, I'm still on pain medication. Just want to give you guys fair warning on that. Um, I don't have everything that I need. I don't. You know, I sat there and I'm like, is this everything I need? Is this everything I need? Because this is going to be like the last time I get to do it before I start recording. And no, it's not everything that I need. But anyways, yeah, uh, I'm still on painkiller. Painkillers, plural. No, singular, painkiller, I guess. Whatever. Um, so I might still be a little bit out of it. But today is the last day that I get to play with painkillers. So today will be the last day that I have any real excuse to be weird. Um, oh, right, 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 right. Keep forgetting. These things have to be enabled for some reason that I don't understand. Just wait till this gets up to, what, 10,000 RF per tick? 10,000 RF. Uh, let's give it a little bit more, just in case. Let's give it 20. That should be enough. Okay. We just need a little bit of a jump start on our first resident energy cell. Uh, let's plunk down the others. Plunk you down. I love being able to fly. Plunk you down. And then I need the redstone energy conduits. Plunk, 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 uh, plunk, and a plunk. Yeah, that should be right. And I just have to make sure to set you in the right way. Oh, no, 10,000. All of these need to be set to 10,000. And by default, they're set to 2,000 for some reason that I don't understand. Everything else is set to their max. Why isn't the resonant energy cells? Eh, whatever. Doesn't really matter, does it? Not really. Uh, you need to be set up to your sides. Right? No. Hang on. This is the bottom. That's the front. That's the back. So, like that. Right? Oh, I don't remember. I guess I'll find out real quick if this is right or not. Plunk that down. Plunk that down. This should be going up, and it is. This should be going up, and it is. And this should be going up, and it is. Awesome. We did that right. Sweet. The glitch generators are just so easy to make in this game. <laughs> they are ridiculously easy to make. And then from here, I mean, it's just we're just connecting everything up. Since the bottom of these are already set to output, that's perfect. Um, and then all I have to do is just connect these. Now, we don't have any output set up yet um, for the drill. So it's just going to sit idle for a minute. It's going to sit full power with its work the whole way up. And it's just not going to do anything because we haven't outputted anything yet. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, let's put in our lenses. Um... I didn't really do any research into these lenses. They're just what I had left over. Oh. That's... Um... Crap. <sighs> okay, apparently the drill's gonna be spitting things out. So let's put an impulse item duct on it. So I don't have to worry about that. At least hopefully I don't have to worry about that. I guess we'll find out here shortly. Basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull, bring the duct out. Instead of using a tesseract, I'm gonna use a duct. 
and not have to worry about that. Uh, so let's plunk in our lasers. Oh yeah, it's smart enough to realize we don't have an output, so it just filled up the juice. Same over here, just filled up the juice. So no fears there. Um, and that takes care of our drill. I'm just thinking about how complicate, how, how complicate, how complex this is going to be. It's going to be annoying as crap. That's what it's going to be. Um, all right. So how do I want to do this? Because this is the easy part. I mean, as you saw, it took me what three minutes to set up the drill. So we have the drill. I mean, these things are f almost fully charged. That thing is fully charged. Yeah, so these things are almost fully charged. So now I just have to get everything out to where it needs to be. So what do we start with? I guess we, I guess we got to figure out what all we have to work with. And that's a lot of stuff. I mean, we obviously we know we have tin and lead. So let's start there. Let's start with tin and lead. And tin and lead are both ores, so they have to be pulverized and then cooked. So what I'm going to do, I didn't think about this before I started this. I, I made a stupid mistake. I didn't think about this before I did it. Uh, let us start with, yeah, let's put the pulverizers on the bottom. The furnace is on top. No, 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 no. Uh, hang on. Let's pop those real quick. Okay, so what we have to think about is we have to think about the outputs of these things. So, like, if I'm going to have the line of lockers, say, here. So these will be the infinity lockers for all of the ores that output, or all of the, the ingots that output and stuff like that. Uh, the pulverizer and the redstone furnace have to be sideways because you can't output out the front of these things. So, uh, we want, let's see, input is going to be on the bottom, which is gonna be there. Output is going to be on the top, but because we have a pulverizer, we just want the top one to be at the top. Yeah, and then the bottom one will be out the side. Though, if this is going to be tin or lead, I don't think, let's see, if we hit you, um, smelting pulverizer, pulverizer outputs pulverized silver. So that's something we have to take into account, or that's just going to fill the system and it's going to kill everything. So the output has to be off to the side. But how do we power this thing? Holy crap. I was going to run power underneath it all, but then how do we worry about input? Oh, oi. Um, what if we... See, eh, this is why I usually test things in a test world before I start, is because, well, this is not as easy as it seems. All right, so if we have pulverizer, we need an input, we need two inputs and two outputs. Right? Yes, two inputs, two outputs. So if we put the pulverizer here, and then the furnace there, run the power underneath it, input on this side, output on this side, and output on top. Yeah, that'll work, that'll work, that'll work. I think, I hope. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, so let's uh, run some power. And I'm going to need a lot of it. Uh, so, very long path of power here. Not the movie path of power. That's something else entirely. Um, wee. Plop. Okay. Um, ooh, and then I have to deal with the furnace. So, the furnace needs power, too. Which means I need a lot more energy conduit. Hey, there's water here. There must have been a lake here at one point. When I tore it out. Because I didn't need the lake there. Alright, so if we put power down here. 
And then that should be it. That should be all we have to do. Alrighty. Uh, then we'll take some ducting. Yeah, we'll do some impulse item ducts. And we'll put this as the primary input for everything. This will be the input from the drill directly. So this will be where the ores are coming from. So we will get a pneumatic servo. Plunk that down there. And then... Um, whitelist this guy for lead. Alright, and then since that's going to be the input, that'll be fine. Uh, so lead will come in on the left here. So that's exactly what we want. Uh, let's get rid of those real quick. We want primary output to be on top, or to come out to this side, into the redstone furnace. And then the secondary output will be on top. So then, then we have that. Uh, and then basically what we'll do, we'll put a impulse item duct there, flip it around, bloop, and I think we need a pneumatic servo as well. Fairly sure we need a pneumatic servo there anyway as well. So we'll just leave that like that. And then uh, we'll put some more impulse item ducts down. So what will happen is the lead will come in and it will get pulverized. It will turn into pulverized lead and pulverized silver. That was silver, right? Oh, that's the induction smelter. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, pulverized silver. So then the pulverized silver will come up and then go back into the pipe and then go down where we'll fiddle with it later. But then the lead, the cooked lead, the pulverized lead, I mean, will come out here and come in this side, get cooked, and then go out that side into the locker. Yay! So then what will happen is we'll just, I mean, the lead will be processed. It'll be taken care of. And if I very quickly, um, yeah, let's throw down a locker real quick as a test. Flip it around to an input. Uh, throw a quick pneumatic servo in there. Set you to active. Alrighty, and then I throw our chunk of lead in there. Uh, oh, there it goes. It's going down there. It's in the pulverizer. Oh, we have no power. I need a tesseract, which is why I brought the tesseract. Oh, hi, zombie. Bye, zombie. Uh, plunk you down right there. Set you to the chunk loader frequency. Uh, no. Input energy only so that's boop and there we go all right so now we have power to everything now we have a pulverizer doing its thing i don't think we're going to get any silver because i mean it's 10 percent odds what are the odds i'm going to get it not existent and then two pulverized lead go in here and then they get cooked and boom diada we have two lead ingots Whew. so now what we have to do is repeat this for all the other ores. Um, so this is going to be somewhat difficult to do. We'll flip you around real quick. We'll set you to dense. And then I'll connect in the drill. This will work. Yeah, this will work. So here's here's my thinking on what I'm doing here. Uh, I plug this into the drill. Not that, though, because we don't want that. Where is... There's my crescent hammer. Yeah, we plug this into the drill. We set our drill to automatically pull out. Will it do it automatically? Yes, it will. Ooh, I don't have to put a pneumatic servo in the drill. All right, and then what will happen is if lead pops out, it will pop into the pulverizer. If lead doesn't pop out, it will fall into this chest. So right here we have ferrous ore, which is another thing we're going to have to take into account. Um, and there goes something else. Man, this drill is fast. Sapphire ores. 
So everything that goes in there will be one more thing we have to make sure to take into account. Um, so let's do this again. So we're gonna do tin next, which is right there. So uh, let's see, tin pulverizer. Uh, let's see, pneumatic servo, pneumatic servo, pneumatic servo. Yeah, I gotta think about that real quick. Put the pneumatic servos, set you to whitelist. Tin, though I don't think that's a big problem. Oh, it is. Go away. <laughs> All right. That's something I didn't think of. So I got to do that real quick. Set it to uh, whitelist really fast. Uh, yeah, throw that in there real quick. Oh, look, we got pulverized silver. So this thing output pulverized silver. So that's something I'm going to have. That's also something I'm going to have to take into account. Not 100% sure how. Um, I know how. I know how I can take it into account. Um, if we get some silver ore, if not, I'll run over and get it. But uh, I'll show. I'll do silver next. That way I'll show you how I'm going to have to take it into account. All right, so let's turn all of these off real quick. So we want the input to come in on the left. Uh, primary output to the right. Secondary output to the top, no, that's bottom, top. There we go. And uh, so impulse item duct there, no, there. Which I guess technically I don't have to connect to that pipe there because it's already connected. Um, crescent hammer. Well, let's see, do I even need a secondary U? Uh, pulverizer outputs pulverized iron as well as tin. So yes, we do have to worry about the secondary output. Alrighty. Uh, then we will set you up properly. We want the input on that side, output on that side, and then we need a locker real quick. My mouse seems to be a little flaky at the moment. It seems to not be working like it should. I don't want you pointing that way. I want you pointing the other way. Boop, boop, there we go. Now all the doors are facing the right way. Okay, so now we have, uh, so let's see. Tin will come in here. It will get pulverized and then pulverized tin will come out here and then be cooked and come out here. Whereas pulverized iron will go up. Which, you know what, I'm mildly curious if this will work anyways. Like if we're going to have pulverized iron coming out if I don't need a pneumatic servo. Uh, let's go find some iron real quick. I'm sure I have lots of it. You know, since we got this thing working. Iron. Boop. Let's, let's, let's make 10. So in theory, if this is a 10% uh, chance, so that's one in 10, I have 10, so odds are good, not perfect, but odds are good that I will get one. I need silver, don't I? No, tin, tin, because I got confused. Yeah, um, oops. Throw you back in there real quick. So I need tin. Let's try that again. I was thinking iron because we're testing the iron. Uh, yeah, the pulverized iron output. So I was thinking iron. But I need to be thinking tin because that's what we're testing. All right, so throw some tin in there. Hopefully we'll get some iron. Hey, that was a yes because that's pulverized iron right there. Oop, there we go, pulverized iron. And that's getting full really, really fast. So let's let's double that space up real quick. <laughs> All right, so that answers that question. I do not need a pneumatic servo like I put in there. Uh, this will do it automatically, which is awesome. Uh, we're also cooking the pulverized tin, and we're getting tin ingots. So now we have a lot of lead ingots. We have more than we started with. We have a lot of tin ingots because I put some in there. 
and then there we go. Alrighty, uh, that's probably also something I'm gonna have to be thinking about because I bet you lead and tin are secondary outputs of something else. So that's something we're gonna have to think about. Um, so let us do silver next. Uh, do we have any silver in here yet? Diamond, silver, perfect. All right, so I want to put down the pulverizer real quick. Um, real quick, pneumatic servo, whitelist, silver. All right, now nothing should go in here. Oh, but we had an emerald go in there. I don't want that. The only reason I left the drill attached, I mean, I really shouldn't have this drill attached right now, but the only reason I left the drill attached is so that I can see what all I still have to process, what, still, what I still have to work with. All right, so input to the left, primary output to the right, secondary output to the top. All right, and then we put down a redstone furnace. Uh, let's see. Primary output to the left. Turn you off, turn you off. Or primary input to the left, output to the right. Uh, lock her down. And then, let's see, impulse item duct. Let's see, what do you output? If I you, you. Oop, there it is. See, pulverized lead. So lead outputs silver, silver outputs lead. So they go back and forth. So what I will do, we will put a, uh, put that there, uh, get our crescent hammer and disable that because we don't want that. Then we need a pneumatic servo. And it will whitelist. pulverized silver all right so i think i think we're getting the point here uh and then then we need another impulse item duct Bloop. which will output automatically all right so i need lead to test with because i need pulverized lead or i'm not going to be able to do these tests Yeah, uh, I'm not going to be able to set it up, I should say, because this is set up right. So uh, what's going to happen is this thing will do pulverized lead. It will output, or this thing will do lead. It will output pulverized lead and pulverized silver. The pulverized silver will come up over here and down there where it will be cooked in the furnace dedicated to silver because this is set to whitelist input silver. And then it will output here, just like it's supposed to. Theoretically, anyways. <laughs> uh, so let's just throw that stuff in there real quick. Hopefully, we let's see if we get some lead dust. Uh, I would say that's a no. No, we did not get any lead output. Uh, but we got silver. I mean, that works. And it's working pretty good. Uh, we still only have pulverized iron. No pulverized lead. Oh, well. Eventually, it will catch up, and I'll be able to, uh, you know, put in these that we need. Um, then from here, it's just completely repetitive. Up until we get down to, like, the tanzanite, the diamond, and the silicon. Those things will just get pulverized. Well, let's see. The silicon... Ooh, the silicon's going to be hard. Wait a second. Yeah, the silicon can only be popped. You can't pulverize silicon, can you? Let's find out. Can you pulverize silicon? No, you cannot pulverize silicon. Hmm, what do I do with the silicon? That's going to be a tough one. And the cheese ore. Well, I could smelt the cheese ore. That's good. In fact, that's how you do it. You smelt the cheese ore. So that's not a problem. We'll just put in a furnace. Well, anyway, so let's look at the diamonds because this is going to be slightly different. What we're going to do, instead of having 
uh, like the furnace than the pulverizer, or the pulverizer than the furnace, I should say. It's just going to be the pulverizer to get the diamonds. And I'd show you that it specifically, but I want to get the cookable stuff taken care of first. So I'm going to cut off right here, and then I will come back just real quick for when I start into just the pulverizable stuff. And it'll just right... I'll finish up the cookable stuff, uh, like the, 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 the silver, the lead, the copper, the tin, that kind of stuff. I'll finish up those, and then I'll start into the others, and that's when I'll pop back in. Um, and I, I, I'll put some thought into what I can do with the silicon ore, but uh, I don't think I can do anything with it just yet. I'll have to figure that out, but uh, I will let you know, and I shall be right back. And I'm back, and I've finished up the cookable stuff. Well, the pulverizable cookable stuff, um, which I didn't know this, but the ardite and the cobalt can be pulverized as well. I didn't know that. I thought it, just because it was Tinker's construct, I figured it would just be, you know, you have to throw it in the smeltery. But no, um, you can throw it in the pulverizer and the redstone furnace, and it works just fine, and you get double the output, which is awesome. Um... Just real quick aside, I have disabled the uh, laser drill just for the moment, just so I can continue working without being interrupted constantly like I was before. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's I got this all set up. Uh, basically what it is is we are inputting only the ore here, outputting whatever the secondary output is, inputting only the dust here, and then outputting to the locker. It's really that's that simple. Um, once you grasp it once, it just it's repeated over and over and over again, um, and that get me ten different types of ingot, which is really cool. Uh, there is a small problem that I was trying to figure out, uh, and that's these guys down here, the biomes of plenty, uh, basically precious gems, the malachite, ruby, sapphire, topaz, peridot, and tanzanite. Um, if we hit U, we see that they're only in the ore dictionary. They don't show up like in the pulverizer or in the furnace or anything. So we're kind of stuck with them as they are. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do with those. Um, I'm thinking it's going to involve um, Mine Factory Reloaded and that Block Breaker. But I haven't tested yet, so I'm not 100% sure. Uh, same with the Silicon Ore. If we hit U here, we just get the ore dictionary. So possibly also the block breaker, which, again, I'm going to have to look into. Not 100% sure how that works. But up here, I mean, it's simple. Diamond door can go in the pulverizer. Lapis can go over in the pulverizer. Nether, coal, glowstone, uh, emerald, and redstone can all go in the pulverizer. Uh, the only exception is the cheese. But the cheese can go in a furnace. So no fear there. So all of these are going to be doing one thing. Uh, basically, they're either just going to be going through a pulverizer or just going to be going through a furnace. Uh, how, uh, output, however, is going to be slightly different because if we hit U on the redstone ore and go to the pulverizer, we see that it will output cinnabar as well. So we're going to have to take into account cinnabar in our setup here. Um, yeah, so let's start with the redstone. Uh, let's pull down a pulverizer. Now, I already have power going here and an input item duct, and this just continues on from over here, exactly as we would expect it to do. Um, so let's start. We'll start by putting down the pulverizer, uh, whitelisting the redstone, just as we did on the other side. Whitelist, redstone, all right. And secondary output goes to the top, primary input in from the left, primary output to the right, bottom and the back get disabled. And we're not gonna be dealing with a furnace, so we go straight into the lockers. Bloop. And then from here, um, I'm not, I'm, yeah, well, from here, I mean, it's just redstone, 
gets pulverized, and then instantly output into the lockers. Now what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get some cinnabar here, and then further down the line, there we go, uh, further down the line, we will... Plop. Uh, let's see, crescent wrench, there we go. Disable that real quick, set you to output, and then further down the line here somewhere, we will set a whitelist input to a locker, just straight into a locker for just the Cinnabar, and then just for anything else that may come up, um, which I'm not 100% sure about, but let's do the cheese ore real quick. Uh, we're going to need a furnace for that. Uh, I'm going to need a pneumatic servo real quick. So let us plunk down our furnace, servo, whitelist, cheese. Uh, I don't have to worry about a secondary output at all because the cheese just outputs cheese curd. We'll put down some lockers, which I'm running low on gonna have to make some more but whatever um and you know what that should be it for the cheese i mean we just throw it in the redstone furnace it cooks everything up and it outputs cheese curd which is really cool which in case you're curious and i haven't found a quite found a use for this yet but if you take eight cheese curd and combine it with a bucket of milk this is what you get you get a block of cheese which i'm assuming is something like cake where you right click and you can eat but uh, I don't, I'm not hungry right now, so I don't know. And I kind of don't want to ruin my block of cheese, even though I can kind of make a million more at this point in time. Uh, I can't make any yet, not from here, but, you know, whatever. And then from there, it's just repeating what we're going to do with all of the other ores, uh, like the glowstone, for example. I definitely want to do this because I am blowing through the glowstone. You zombies are annoying. I know, he's chasing something else, but whatever. Anyway, so let's set up a pulverizer real quick. Uh, pneumatic servo, whitelist, the glowstone. Did I set the other one to whitelist? Yes, I did. Okay, good. Uh, boop, boop, boop. And the glowstone will just output glowstone. It won't output a secondary one, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we plunk down our lockers. And boom, we have four glowstone for every glowstone block we get. So that's pretty awesome. And basically that's what I'm doing the whole way down the line. Um, let's see, nether quartz. Does nether quartz output anything unusual? Yes, nether quartz output sulfur. So we got to worry about sulfur for the output of the nether quartz as well. So we're going to have two extra lockers that go nowhere. Uh, well, that are attached to nothing. No, they're not attached to any special inputs. Um, just a white listed pipe. Um, let's see if we can get us some sulfur. That way we can just put that. Uh, bottom two are off, secondary output goes up, primary output goes to the side, primary input the other side. I love how simple this is. I mean, yes, okay, it took me a little while to piece the pieces together to actually do this. Um, am I only getting two? I'm only getting two. Huh. Give me some sulfur. Give me some sulfur. Yes, we could sulfur. I need this stuff so I can whitelist it. So it... That way, later on down the line, I could just, you know, whitelist this stuff. And let's see, we got coal, emerald, lapis, and diamond. So four more. That's it, just four more. And they're all pulverizers. Um, so let's just do this real quick, plunk that down. We'll set you to whitelist, emerald, uh, plunk you down, set you to whitelist, Diamond, whiteness. Did I put that? Yes, I did. Sometimes I have to check it just to make sure. Uh, plunk you down, whitelist, lapis, and then plunk you down real quick, whitelist, coal, whitelist. Yeah. Sometimes I forget and I have to check. 
Uh, coal does not have a special output, nor does uh, lapis, nor does diamond, uh, nor does emerald. Right, that's emerald? Yeah, that's emerald. That's diamond. Yeah, they don't... Do they? Hang on. You... Pulverizer, no. Diamond, you. Pulverizer, no. Yeah, and then I'm quite sure the rest of them is the same. Uh, how many lockers do I have left? Need eight for them. I might have just enough lockers to do this. And then from here, what we will do, we'll have to do something interesting. Plunk one down there, and we need our crescent hammer to get rid of that output. And then plunk another one down there. Uh, let's see, lockers, lockers, lockers. Plunk, 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 plunk. Uh, pneumatic servos. Whitelist sulfur. Whitelist cinnabar. And uh, then we just need output for these guys. No, plunk you down. Um, remove this side. I'm really, really, really glad that uh, thermal expansion allows me to disconnect things from inputs. Makes me really happy that we can do that. Uh, and I think I'm just going to make this easy just by doing that and that. And then that way, anything that gets outputted will get shoved up and down and then across and into its respective lockers. Simple as that. And we could throw all of this stuff in this locker here that I have set up. And they go off and they do their thing. Just got to wait for it to fully pattern. And those two automatically go down. Sweet. Cinnabar. Looks like everything's working. Oop. I wonder if we'll get any anything extra. Probably not. I mean, we didn't throw anything in the quartz or in the redstone. So, yeah, we're not going to get anything special there. And I think that's it for right now. Uh, yeah, the only thing that's left is the silicon and the biomes of plenty precious gems that I've still got to figure out how to do. Like I said, I think it's going to involve uh, Mine Factory Reloaded and there are two things in here which I don't know which ones they are. The block placer, I think, is one of them. Uh, to place the blocks, and then there is a block, there's a block smasher, and where's the other one? Auto jukebox, lava fabricator, I'm just looking for it, I can't find it. Um, I thought there was another one. Is there not another one? Sewer, sludge boiler, there it is, block breaker, so there's block breaker, and block smasher. It's one of those two. Like I said, I haven't I haven't researched it yet. I haven't tested it yet because I didn't realize that those were going to be a problem. Um, if I'd known those would be a problem, I would have done that before I started recording entirely. But uh, it's going to be one of those two and the block placer, and that's probably going to do what I need it to do. I believe it's the block smasher I need. Uh, but that one is one is like silk touch, and one isn't, from what I can tell. So I think that's just going to be that simple, and then we're going to have all of these, the silicons and the biome plenty stuff. Now, you might be asking, how do I attach this to the uh, Project Red sections? Because, I mean, right, you can see I have all this Project Red stuff here to set up, but I haven't done that yet. So how do I do that? Well, that is really, really easy. Uh, what I need is a whole bunch of the routed interface pipes, my shovel, and bat mode. <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll just dig out underneath all of the lockers, put in the routed interface pipes, 
plunk. Dig out uh, in front of the locker so I could actually see. And just uh, whitelist them accordingly. Put in the uh, responder chips that are set to whitelist. Put in the extractor chip. No, not the extractor chips. The broadcaster chips. Put in the broadcaster chips. And it is just that simple. And then all I have to do is run it over to about here. Uh, somewhere around here anyways. And it will connect to the rest of the system. And it will be that simple. Um, in fact, let us... Whoo, Hang on. I feel short. <laughs> I feel short being in bat mode. But anyways, let's plunk down, back that down again. And then the drill can go off and do its thing. These automatically go off to wherever they need to go and they process. Uh, I am going to do one last thing. Uh, let's plunk you down and set you to dense. Okay, so the idea with this is that everything should be processed in the system. But I might have missed something. Something might be wrong. Anything that I missed will show up in this chest to be processed. Ooh, like for example, all of these here. I don't have anything set up for these here, so they're not whitelisted anywhere. So right now they'll just go in here for now. And I'll just figure out something to do with them later. Hmm. All right, well, this is getting into being a long episode, and I don't feel like I did that much. But, eh, whatever. I wanted to at least finish this up and get it up and running and working for you guys. So, uh, yeah, space, there you go. I actually figured out how to do it. Uh, not as simple as I wanted, but not nearly as complicated as I feared. So, hey, there we go. It's awesome. All right, so I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.